Hello everyone. In today's episode, we will build our first university, replace the old agro farm plans with a new version, and start planning our first gravel processing building so we can eliminate the first construction import relatively soon. We will also get a bit of a scare near the end, where coal will run out in our heating plant, with temperatures already below freezing. That woke me up a bit. So, this is where we left off. I set myself a couple goals to accomplish in this episode, in order to avoid having another one where I would just fast forward through it, because I had to wait around for things to be built. First of all, I will add another truck to the clothing industry's import line. Rest assured, this is far from enough, to reach anything even remotely close to peak efficiency. I did a couple tests after this episode and determined that I would need 5 trucks to even start thinking about anything more than just breaking even. Again, I will need to set limits on how much it can carry of certain things. For now it is a 70-30% to split between crops and chemicals, but later I will change it to 80-20%. to Even that will be a bit too much chemicals. And since we have more than one truck running on the line now, we should definitely enable line spacing. Can't wait for this feature to be available for trains. But for now, it's exclusively a road vehicle feature. Next up, something I should have thought about doing way earlier. A university. It's been over a year since we started, and the original people we invited at the start are starting to die off. Unless we start training up future teachers and engineers, we would be in a world of hurt. I downloaded a university building from the workshop for this. Smaller footprint, less capacity, but we don't need anything too big to start. Even this feels a bit bigger than I'd like. Unless this town becomes the capital of our republic, even this smaller uni can turn this place into an eventual university center for this corner of the country. Next up, I'll move this small construction office a bit. It's a little too close to the original. If we want to eventually expand further into the mainland, might as well spread out our infrastructure a bit. Not much of a change, but it's something. I will also clean up the packed dirt around the place. All the service roads left behind a lot of unseemly patches, so I'll just quickly go around and get rid of them. I will also cut off these unnecessary roads around the farms. I won't round off the corners for now. I will have to expand sooner or later so they can stay. And I'm really bothered about these fields having fresh grass patches. I simply have to get rid of them. Now, that looks much better. Next up, I will have to do something about the roads around here. Of course, the first thing I will have to do is build a service road, so the main one can be upgraded. I'll just break it all up into smaller segments with these side connections, so each can be worked on by different machines. Also, let's not forget to add the new fuel station to the distribution house. It's all well and good that we built it, but it's not much use if it doesn't have fuel to give out. Let's look at the agro farm situation next. As I mentioned in the previous episode, 3 Division replaced it with 3 different sized parking lots for farming vehicles. I was thinking of only building the medium sized one. But then I thought, we will need to expand this area sooner or later. Might as well plan for that eventuality. I had to do a bit of groundwork to fit it in, and I only had to move a couple roads around to do it. As for the distribution office, well, we will need either a bigger one, or a couple more of these small ones. But whenever we do manage to start up this area, a small one will do for now. I 
I mentioned this in the previous episode. If the building stopped working because it has no demand, we really don't need to know. This heating plant has workers and coal. It just cannot heat the water any further. If the production stops, but the building says it is operating without issues, we really don't need a notification. When that text turns from green to red, and displays an actual issue, only then we need a warning. Next on the agenda, is a heavy voltage switch for the industrial area. It's better to do it now, instead of when it already has our main source of power going through it. We made this mistake with the original medium voltage lines, having to disrupt the town's electricity to hook up the industries. Let's avoid it if we can. Might as well plan the transformer too. Of course we don't need to build them just yet. They would eat a lot of steel, and that's pretty expensive stuff. And just to occupy ourselves, how about we place a few stone quarries on this patch of exposed rock. Setting up a gravel industry is always the first step towards making our construction industry self-sufficient. It is used in almost everything. It serves as part of the foundation for all construction. We needed to make cement, concrete, asphalt, prefab panels, hell, even chemicals needed. To give ourselves a bit of breathing room, let's take out a small loan. The longer the duration, the higher the overall interest rate will be, but at the same time, the monthly burden will be lower. It seems we made our first export while we weren't looking. Nice, 6 tons of clothes were sold for almost 9,000 rubles. With that secured, we can now tell the distribution office to stop delivering clothes to the town store from the border. We got it covered. We might as well lower the amount stockpiled in the store itself. Clothes are consumed at a snail's pace, so even this initial slow rate of deliveries are plenty enough to satisfy our citizens. I will eventually do the same for electronics. While we are yet to produce them ourselves, their source is close by, so we don't really need to have this much in reserve. Giving more room for food is more important. We are close to the end of summer. If we are to stay at least somewhat efficient during the winter, we really need to invest in a road maintenance depot. Nothing really happened for a couple days, so I'll make a cut here. The university is almost built. We will not see anyone finish their studies before the episode is over, but there will be a few pupils who will be fairly close to graduating. And it's done. Time to train up the future leaders of our glorious republic. Well, maybe not leaders. We can only have one of those. I'll enable the new agro farm to be built. We will only finish the foundation and the bulk of the resource deliveries, but we will not finish the full construction just yet. Wow. I hate it when this happens. We are literally inches away from finishing this piece of road, and we ran out of resources. Thankfully, the dumper got here just in time. With that, we can remove the majority of the side road, 
and import deliveries can now drive on a brand new stretch of gravel. Of course, let's not forget to claim back a bit of greenery by restoring the soil around the road. Designating this stretch of road to be upgraded will result in a bit of a scary situation come winter. At this moment, we only have a single dumper truck delivering both gravel and coal in the distribution office. Since we have been using a lot of gravel lately, that truck will be busy refilling the gravel storage and won't have time to supply the heating plant. We can also assign the clothing factory to the distribution office to manage. Not to deliver clothes, but to pick up fabric instead. We will periodically overproduce fabric, and if that happens, it's better to sell the excess, rather than letting it back up, and stopping production in the fabric factory. We just have to set it to go for a pickup if the reserves go above 10%. And let's not forget to allow exporting fabrics at the border. I chose the original border for this. If the truck sells the excess there, its Home Depot is right next to it. We can check the education levels on our citizens by mousing over them. As far as I can tell, a value below 1 means no education between 1 and 2 is basic education, and above 2 is a university degree. For every successful visit to the university, students seem to add around 0.08 to their education level. Once it reaches 2, we should see them turn into highly educated citizens. As you can see, our highly educated population has been decreasing steadily since we started. We haven't reached critical shortages yet, so it's really fortunate that we managed to get started on it this early. Although we do see less and less of them working in very important jobs, like teachers or doctors. But I think we can still manage without having to invite more of them from abroad. Just checking the current value of fabrics compared to finished clothes on the international market. It is obviously much less, but still a respectable 300 something rubles. We are overproducing them, so might as well make some extra money. And since this service connection is no longer necessary, let's get rid of it. I took a look at the amount of chemicals that remain in the cargo space of this truck, and it's still too much. I will lower the current 30-70% split to 20-80%. And we don't really need this much of the stuff stored in the factory either. Let's see how things go with a 60-40% split. Next on the agenda, planning the first steps of the gravel processing industry. As I said before, this is one of the most widely used resources in the game. And as we will soon learn, Maybe we should have built this a little earlier. The main processing facility has no conveyor connection for importing quarried stone, so that part will have to be handled by trucks, but processed gravel is something we can store in abundance. For now, let's see if a small aggregate storage is enough, should I change my mind before it's all built, we only need to raise the ground on the other side of the main road a little, to allow the conveyor belts to pass over it, so this is not all set in stone. Although I do forget to stop the construction of the automatically placed conveyor, so if we do go with a large storage, that will be a waste of resources. The road used for our industrial imports is almost done. Although we won't be using it too much, since winter is almost upon us, and that will severely impact our truck speeds. So we won't take full advantage of this before spring. Ah! The road that will almost kill our citizens this winter, 
I will try to make this small construction office an exclusively road building endeavor. For this, I will reassign our bulldozers to it, also add a paver, roller, and a couple other vehicles. This will disrupt the construction of the road leading to the farms for a bit, but that's okay. Everything in due time. Our power networks seem to be doing okay for now, no need for expansion. That reminds me to check the heat exchanger in town. Now, that is almost overloaded. We would survive this winter with this alone, but it's best to think ahead if things start to get this close to their limits. Behind the university sounds good. This kind of dictates the direction our town will have to expand. But for now, be it north, south, or east, sounds okay. West, not so much. That would put us closer to the border outpost, with all of its polluting buildings. I love making this kind of neatly arranged infrastructure. Not visible above ground, but we know it's there. I'll tell the new construction office to only look for roads, footpaths, and factory connections for its build queue. Of course, I forgot to tell it where to pick up its materials. I'll remember it someday. Still, the other office can deal with that part for now, so it's not completely hopeless. As for the new free spaces in the original office, our biggest issue seemed to be the low number of open hull trucks to move the main construction materials. Two more sounds like a great addition. Still nobody graduated from university yet. The student furthest along their studies seemed to be about halfway done. There. Education level, 1.5. We should see the number of our college graduates shoot up in the next episode. The foundation of our first farm is finished. That should send all the open haul trucks on their way to pick up and deliver all the construction materials. This is where I decided to stop building the farm for now. I'll just wait for the rest of the materials to arrive, and then we will tell it to halt construction. And this is where we stop building the farm. We have everything to finish this phase, but I would feel more comfortable with our situation if we finished building the second heat exchanger for our town instead.
The road of death is complete. The single dumper assigned to the distribution office is frantically trying to refill the gravel storage at this point, and have no time to deal with the impending coal shortage in the heating plant. And this is the kind of warning message that is useful. As soon as it appeared I knew something was wrong. With temperatures below zero at this point, the heating plant has no reason to stop producing hot water, so the only reason for it to halt is either the lack of workers, or coal. We were exporting clothes at a steady rate, and kept up with the interest payment for our loan, so we can afford a couple extra dumper trucks for our distribution office. Well, better late than never. This 25 tons of coal should be enough to tide us over while they refill the gravel storage, but with temperatures like this, it is very dangerous to suddenly lose heating. I'll add a third dumper. Just to be safe. The second winter is here. I'm sure that little coal scare will teach me to pay closer attention to our critical infrastructure. and the underground pipe is also finished building. The second heat exchanger is up and running. I can already tell you that we will definitely take out a second, bigger loan at the start of the next episode to fund the expansion of our industrial import line. Right now, the biggest thing holding us back is the slow rate of closed production. If we can make that go faster, we will be in a very good place to finally finish the farm area, and start building the first gravel processing plant as well. Just to be safe, I lowered the amount of gravel imported. I'm sure I will forget to raise it back up come spring, but maybe not. I'll try to remember it. Hopefully it won't be long until I can completely eliminate the need to import gravel altogether. I'll take a second loan here to repay the first one, and give us a bit more financial breathing room at the same time. There is no danger of us going bankrupt just yet, we can easily afford to take out bigger loans if necessary. And I already know that that is exactly what we will do in the next episode. Finally, the road maintenance depot is complete. I'll start with one snowplow for now, and not bother cleaning dirt roads. With the bigger loan in the next episode, snowplows are one of the things we will need more of. And with another close shipment being rolled out, we reached the end of this episode. As I said before, the biggest issue we face at this point is the slow rate of imports going into the fabric factory. I did a bit of testing, and I concluded that 5 trucks is the optimal amount, at least for conditions without snow. With 4, the factory routinely ran out of crops, but with 5, the import storage was always full. So that's the first thing we will buy with our next loan extension. The second thing is a couple more snowplows. Maybe 3 extra. Nothing's more aggravating in this game than watching one of those guys finish a long stretch of country road, only for the snow to start falling immediately after, completely erasing the work done. 
I really wish the devs would implement some kind of safeguard against this, like snowplows spreading salt on the roads as they clean the snow off. Anyways, I'm getting off track. With these two purchases, we should be in a place where we can safely afford to continue building the farm area and finally eliminate another import in the form of food. The first university students will graduate soon, and we can also start thinking about starting construction on our first gravel processing plant. I hope you liked the video. If you did, dropping a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. Until then, see you later.